This is the story of one of the greatest sporting comebacks ever seen. Job done for this guy, Troy Bayless. Looks back, it's easy. Race one, 2002, sits back and cruises. It is Troy Bayless across the line, coming in with second position. We came from winning that championship with Troy in 2001, and it looked like we were on the right path to win also in 2002. Troy Bayless, the world champion, crosses the line to win the first race this afternoon. Five races on the trot, Troy Bayless makes history. Halfway through the season, it was done and it wasn't going to be Edwards. Troy Bayless has won more races on the trot than anybody else in the history of World Superbikes. Troy Bayless, the world champion, takes the first race and he can fly. That really starts to cement Bayless's hold on this championship. It was a year of completely two halves. Captain America takes the win, race two. It was just phenomenal. Troy Bayless is out of this race. When you are playing with somebody that is always there, something that you can do it. Colin Edwards goes through the chicane and across the strike on the back wheel and he's won. Colin Edwards is leading this championship. We're going out and duking it out and it's going to be one hell of a race that's for sure and I cannot wait. They were so, so fast, unbelievably fast. In, in fact, I will say in 2001, 2002, they were that fast. I didn't know if I'd got the ability or talent to get that fast. Colin did nothing in the beginning of the season, not nothing, but Troy was there, you know, the dominant force kept going. We came from winning that championship with Troy in 2001, and it looked like we were on the right path to win also in 2002. What made it so special was the fact that it was done. Halfway through the season, it was done and it wasn't going to be Edwards. In what had been one of the most dominant starts to a season ever seen, Troy Bayliss took the opening six race wins of the 2002 World Superbike season, whilst Edwards couldn't get near him. A sole win at Sugo at round four in Japan got his win tally up and running, but defending world champion Bayliss retaliated with a double at Monza. Another win for Edwards came in race one at Silverstone when Bayliss crashed not once, but twice in the pouring rain, although he bounced back for race two. Questions were starting to be asked from within the Honda camp. We felt that we were doing everything we could, um, but Troy was beating us, you know, and generally we're getting beaten in the last couple of laps of the race. We couldn't get around him. If we made the last ditch effort to get around him, he'd just power right back by. That was a hard to swallow, knowing that you're, you're doing everything you can kept questioning ourselves. Um, were we doing everything right? Were we doing everything we could do? I questioned Colin's fitness because you know, I never saw him train. We questioned, well, okay, if it's not physical fitness, is it mental fitness? Are we getting beaten because we're mentally not strong enough? We questioned the rider, we questioned the mechanics, we questioned myself. Were we doing everything right? Brand new livery for the bike just for this American round and he really is uh, Captain America himself in that outfit, isn't he? When the championship went to Laguna Seca, there was you know, a big shift from, from Honda, from Colin. They, they won races, they were like a steam train. Looking on the inside, can Edwards fight back? Yes, he does, side by side, that's as close as you like. That was very tight indeed, strong stuff from Edwards. Around and across the start finish line, Colin Edwards starts and strikes, Captain America takes the win, race two. Points gap is 58 before this race is going down to 53 again. There goes the burnout, that's just spinning it up. I have to go out there and win or throw it down the road. I don't know what else I can do. We won that second race, which was a battle. Edwards' form coincided with drama for Troy Bayliss. He crashed with teammate Ruben Chaus in warm up at Brands Hatch for round 10, leaving him down and injured but not out, whilst Edwards kept on winning. However, the penultimate round at the TT circuit, Assen, would play host to one of the most dramatic races of the year. Edwards won race one as the streak continued, but even in his wildest dreams, he couldn't have imagined what race two would bring. The key of the year for me was Assen. That was quite a downfall. 
Troy Bayliss is oh, out of this it. race. He was gifted third and now he's out of this race. Now, this is interesting stuff. I told him to his wife, we're going to pay a lot of this, uh, this mistake. Number two, Colin Edwards would have a one point advantage if he stays where he is. Troy made a mistake which gave us the upper hand really. When you are playing with somebody that is always there, it's something that you can do it. Colin Edwards goes through the chicane and across the strike on the back wheel and he's won 2002 Superbike points leader. It was a phenomenal turn of events as Bayliss fell by the wayside and watched his 58-point lead come down to a one-point deficit, the scenes at Assen were like Edwards and Honda had already won the championship. What every fan dreamt of, two titans would fight it out head-to-head -head in the final round of the season, and Edwards was ready for it. If anybody has the edge, it would definitely be me, but at the same time saying that, Troy has nothing to lose anymore either, so we're going out and duking it out, and it's going to be one hell of a race, that's for sure, and I cannot wait. This is the Autodroma Enzo and Dino Ferrari, otherwise known as the Imola Circuit, and this is it. The showdown, the World Superbike Championship, comes down to the wire at this circuit. I can still walk, see you walking in in the, the grandstand full in the morning, completely full. Quel giorno io ero in tribuna alle acque minerali. L'atmosfera era molto particolare. Tutto il pubblico, tutti i presenti a Imola si aspettavano qualcosa di, di molto forte, qualcuna sfida ad altissimo livello tra i due campionissimi che erano Troy Bayliss e Colin Edwards, tra Italia e Giappone, tra un pilota americano e un pilota australiano. Battle Imola at the end was absolutely outstanding. That was just a dream weekend. I think Bayless and I both were just happy to be a part of it. It was just, the atmosphere was so thick. We lined up and as we always did, we always looked at one another and had the nod and, and that was it. We knew it was on from there. On the inside, it's, uh, you know, stomach turning and, and all the normal stuff uh, when it's pressure packed. Well, this is going to be do or die. We're about to find out the green flag flies at the back. We're ready for a start. Revs are up, lights are red, and we're ready to jump, and we are away. Everyone cleaning once again. Bayless lunges across the front of Ruben's house. Everyone through, streaking down towards Cambiarello for the first time. Colin Edwards has got the break. Hodgson having a look down the inside. Hodgson steals the show, so it's Hodgson from Bayless, from Edwards as we slide through Tamburello for the first time. That's the view back, that's Hager. There's Edwards right behind us. He doesn't need to be here, he needs to be in front. That's not the gap that he needs, but it's definitely the gap that Bayless needs. That's an attack motion just when you thought it was safe to look. But back in the water, he's looking down the inside. Edwards just slides, but Hodgson fights back. He's not going to make room for him. Fights back down the inside. Edwards lunges the other way. And Hodgson has to give best. Is he close enough this time? Here he is. Down the inside, copybook stuff. Can Bayless fight back? Runs round the outside into Ravazza, carries the speed. I know that it was very intense inside the Ducati box, and I know for sure inside the, the Honda box would have been the same. Had to go and sit on the pit wall once just to calm myself down. You see them shift to the inside, then they move the body up. Oh! Major moment. He's having a look, he's got it, he's carried it through. Can he just bring it back down? Edwards has got to try to fight back. The atmosphere was uh, something unique and uh, I guess that I, we remember this race uh, for the life. They're doing 260 k side by side, almost banging fairings. Excuse me, says Bayless and Fru. Now, Edwards has forced Bayless's hand, he's forced him into a 49. They both did it, Edwards side by side with Bayless, and Edwards just slides back through again. Maybe Bayless overcooked it. Well, I think so, but Colin Edwards knew he had to get in front, and now he needs to stay in front. Now it's his turn to back Bayless down, maybe, just a little bit. He's got to get away from Bayless, or got to get the lap times back up again. Bayless will do everything he can. Looks like he's going to run in the back of him now into the chicanes. This is interesting stuff. Now Edwards is getting it spinning up out of those chicanes. Bayless up the inside, and the whole crowd went nuts. You could hear them, even on the bike, you could hear them.
Troy Bailey's doing everything he has in his power. He's using his teammate as best he can. Zaus all the time closing in. I checked the lap wards of, uh, of Ruben as well. And there were some stages during the race where Ruben rode very well. We had to be careful, especially, that we didn't get involved with the others. They're all together now. The three of them come across the line and it is so close. 0.9 of a second, first to third. When uh, both uh, riders was leading, uh, Ruben uh, closed the gap and I thought uh, maybe something happened uh, for us. If ever Bayless had been rude to Ruben's house, I wish he hadn't now. Come on Ruben, please do something. Colin was sort of sitting there waiting, you know, sitting there behind him. It got to the point on the pit wall that I just thought, like, we need to go. The entire grandstand, the whole 97.7 thousand people here are on their feet. They are going wild for this. Bayless fights back again side by side up the hill. Edwards, it looked like carrying too much speed, but he's held it together. If Ruben could have made second place and then I won, okay, but it's like this. At the moment, now, Edwards back in front. That was a mistake from Bayless. Trying to slow things down, maybe thinking about too much of the tactics as opposed to the riding now. It was everything you could want in a race, the tension, the tactics. It set up that thrilling last lap where they both put everything on the line and Colin didn't have to, he didn't have to win that race to win the championship but he was going to make sure we finished that run. So <laughs> This is the last lap for Troy Bayliss, the world champion, is going to be riding in Superbike. He leaves the series at the end of this year and he did not fancy riding this last lap looking up Colin Edwards exhaust pipe but he's not going to because he slipped it through coming down into Villeneuve chicane. You might beat me for the championship, you're not going to beat me on the track down now into toes, the corner hooks are left. Edwards just slides it down the inside, leaning on each other, there's contact, elbow to elbow, panel to panel. When Troy came up like a, the last time up underneath me, I knew he was going to run a bit wide. I didn't know he had that little moment when the bike got, got uh, kind of sideways on him. This is stunning stuff, and look at Bayliss, he's going to fight back into Piratel. He's going to knock the pair of them off in a minute. Oh, major oh, move oh, this is, that was it. Slapper across the top. I knew then that, damn, the championship was done. He still won't know what's going on behind him. He won't know he has a four bike lead. He's got to hold it together now. He's got that VTR Honda spinning up, out, down the hill they go. Looking good for Colin Edwards now. Well, Colin Edwards reckoned that number one on Bayless's bike was only on loan, and we all said, yeah, sure, Colin, that's fine, whatever you reckon. It looks like it was only on loan. It looks like he's going to get it back. There are about four corners between him and the number one on the front of that Honda, and we are counting him down. Come into the last chicane, and I just had my eyes to the left. I'm like, well, oh, he's not coming up. He's not coming up. So, yeah, it, it all kind of worked out. He's done it across the line of the back wheel. Colin Edwards is the world champion. Troy Bayless is beaten to the line and beaten for the championship. What an amazing battle between these two. If you're watching this in your living rooms at home, get on your feet and salute the pair of them. Colin eventually won because I think just at the last, he just wanted it a little bit more. It's a tough way to lose as well. You see champions in the past that, that are marked as champions at the halfway point and then they lose out by nothing. I think one of the first actions was him and Bayless giving each other a big cuddle, you know? Um, they both respected each other. There was a lot of respect and they're both great guys. It was a showdown. Everyone got what they wanted. It turned out to be a good day, so uh, I'm happy for everybody. Well, it certainly was the best superbike race I think we've ever seen uh, in the history of World Superbikes. Thanks to you two guys. Colin, tell us all about it. Uh, it was just good to be a part of it. I mean, Troy is a great champion, you know, and I mean, we had all year, I don't know, we never really had that many knockdown drag outs until this uh, final so race. Pretty strange, huh? And, uh, but man, what a race. I mean, it's. Troy said something to me in the press conference that kind of struck me a bit odd. He said, I just hope whoever wins the second race is the champion. And I thought, yeah, that's about right. Just two of the greatest riders in superbikes at the top of their game, at the top level, and, and, and the ability and how hard they raced and how fast they raced without any mistakes just showed how class they were. Colin and myself always had um, a good relationship and we always raced really strong and um, I learned a lot off Colin and I'm sure he learned a few things off me as well. He was predictable, he was tough, but he, he wasn't crazy doing any weird stuff, so it was just good hard battle. Colin was not easy to beat, ever. When I rode with him I had a lot of respect for him and all the years that we raced together, like we never 
We had we touched so many times, but we never have an incident together. We're great friends. We were great competitors. No animosity one way or the other, either way. It wasn't this bitter rivalry. It was how it would be nice to see all racing be. You know, the guys get along well and they, they respected each other's work. The one thing I remember was Sunday night, Colin and Troy were sat outside Colin's motorhome having a beer together as though they'd just had a kickabout on the football pitch together for fun. And their friendship was, was completely true. They'd done battle, they'd both left nothing on the track and afterwards, it's about being friends. We knew Emily was something special, you know. I've been around a long time and, and uh, I've seen lots of championships won and uh, I don't think I've seen one, one in a better way than that. Being on the podium with all that crowd cheering for both riders, I think made it sweeter for Troy, at least on that day. But I'm pretty sure knowing Troy that the following week he was a little bit of a, of a headache for his wife and, and, and the people around him. Racing can be so beautiful but can be so cruel at the same time. So, um, but definitely a, a race that sticks in my mind. I lost the championship, Ducati lost the championship, so for sure it's difficult but the guys were happy anyway. I have no regrets. In 2002, that Sunday after the last race, that was probably my best racing moment in my entire life.